Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is again a pleasure and a joy because we are all alive and watching and I'm here in California and you are wherever you are in the world, but safe and that's the key. On behalf of Artists on Lockdown, I am here today the, the, third, the fourth time to share with you the wonder of the world. If the astronaut saw the world out there and he saw the blue planet, as you see behind me is blue too, but today I'm going to take you to someplace else. I'm going to take you rather than underwater, I'm going to take you to the wilderness. I'm going to take you to the land of the jaguar and the land of the, you'll see in a moment, maybe you get that excited. I'm a photographer and my name is Amos Nahum. I'm originally from Israel, but I live in America and thank you America for 40 years for the people who followed me, joined me, participate with me on those expedition to photograph this wildlife. So what I'm going to share with you practically, it is in short segment, anthologies of my photography, of my years in the wilderness, pushing the envelope and living on the edge of comfort and common sense. For this, I created a company which called Big Animal Expedition. And we go out with a small group of two or four people and to see the world, photograph it, research it, and be able to share it then with the world for educa conservation, education, and for awareness about protection of the environment and entertainment. Yes, I did not tell you where I'm going to take you first, but now you can see it will not be in the land of the Jaguar, will be in the land of the foothills of the Himalaya. And I'm not going to hold you for very long uh, wondering what you're going to see, but we're going to see the snow leopard, what we call or what is called to be the guest, the, the guest cat, a cat that's very difficult, a ghost cat, the ghost cat that's very difficult to see. Indeed, we will be walking there and hiking every day 25, 30 miles in these rugged mountains, very thin air because we are about for 12 to 15,000 feet above sea level. We get acclimated before, but we are there during particular period of time because to see the animal, we have to be in the time where they are more visible to humans because otherwise they disappear in this vast environment. The world is bigger than what we think is in our neighborhood of driving a car or a plane. It is much bigger than that. And we saw them, we saw the footsteps all the snow and you knew, we knew no matter how ghost is the animal that it must be around us and there was a team of several people that helped me to get there and indeed they saw it and it was about two hours after we saw the footsteps where we saw the ghost cat but all cat and all predators in the wilderness in africa in uh, in the south america not many left in North America, no other predator, but our governments and uh, uh, in Asia, all predators operate only early morning and late afternoon and the evening. They don't operate during the daytime because it's too hot for them as they exert energy to catch their prey. So she was laying there. The leopard seal was, lay the, the snow leopard was laying there for hours. And we were on the cliff, as you see how he was sitting, I'm here on the left, and also all the guys that joined me. And if you look toward the end of the picture, at the upper level, you see the X, this is where she was sitting. It was 900 feet to 1,000 feet between us, and the canyon was over almost one mile deep between us. So we couldn't go to the other side to be close to her. So we had to put the camera up, ready and waiting. And that is the game of the wilderness. That's the game also when you're watching either a football game, basketball game, golf game. And even if you go to a show, it's not over until the fat lady sing. And if you take this in mind and apply it to everything else in the world, the same thing in the stock market is not over till the last day till four o'clock in the afternoon, on the East Coast anyway. The same thing here. She was sitting and we were waiting. And she was yawning. She was standing up and nothing 
to anything else. But the dilemma was here for the people that are not really fully attuned and they left. Everybody you saw the picture before by around four or five o'clock, they start leaving the mountain. We were up high about 15,000 feet up on the mountain. There were three or four different weather patterns. We had wind, we had snow, we had hell, and then the sun opened, the sky opened, and we had some sun. Around six, almost six o'clock, she moved out from the edge, from the hole where she was, between the two rocks, and she come to the edge of the canyon and looked directly, and I was the only one in the front of her eye. It was just remarkable. I'm lucky enough I was still awake, and it was eight hours or six, eight, ten hours after we saw her first, we saw the footsteps on the snow, and she was there. And then, as she was standing there, she was looking, she turned out to her, to her right. I had to turn my camera to the left. Because when you work with a long lens, my, my angle of view is very, very narrow. It's not like wide or like the eyes. I'm very narrow, so I had to look, move together with how, wherever she's looking at. Something happened that caused her not to look at me anymore, but to look at something else. What she was looking at was another snow leopard arriving. It was took my breath away. This is a ghost cat. All of the 95% of the trip that went there, never seen them. They just went for the experience and they know the chances not to see them. And here I'm standing at the two of them. I did not have enough time to get excited and to experience that and to feel it. And all of a sudden they got both together. One of the most tender moment of the wilderness, two ghost cats, not only one, two, and both of them predator, and they're making actually tender or making love or love on the rock, as I call it. And now, sometimes from the left to the right, from the right to the left, they were really very nagging, very interesting in each other, and they both looking at me before the left, and they left me alone. And it was over six o'clock, 6.30 in the evening. And this is a very difficult shoot because I had to push the camera to the extreme to be able to catch those images. We move. It looked almost the same, coloration almost the same, but very different. Now, in order to be 15,000 feet above sea level, I am on the water level. We are here in the Pantanal in Brazil, looking at the wild jaguar. The main, the main predation of the jaguar is the copybara. Copybara is a big rotten, as rotten as you see them here, but in the picture. And then the, the jaguar try to swim to get them, but the copybara is very alert. They are aware that something happened and they run much faster and they disappear and the jaguar was upset. And the jaguar went to the rest of the forest and the rest, but he recognized me sitting there on a the boat as we uh, we were on the boat while uh, on the river and look at me and look at his eyes look at this detention and the proud body of this animal and then it start moving and you see the predation you see the body the agility of the of the leg and the coloration it is just something to behold and again not just one Maybe I have a luck when I'm traveling and people can travel with me to see that. But here are the two brothers, two Jaguar brothers moving together and we were able to see them and we were able to capture them. And here I try to photograph a particular the movement of the leopard, which is large cat. And look at the agility of the body, the, how the back curve, which give it all the flexibility and all the power what it needed. And that is the angle of how I work when I photograph them, and especially looking from down, looking, being down, looking up, you know, to catch this picture that make it much more, how they call it, focus, concentration of the animal, and looking up out of admiration to Mother Nature. Yes, I admire Mother Nature, and Mother Nature give me back like this particular moment is directly looking at the eyes, pick up the leg, up in the air as the moving so gently, so swiftly. 
and the power of the eyes when they pray. And this is the beauty of being in the wilderness, to be able to share this moment with those animals. But in the Pantanal, we don't just see the cock, uh, the, sorry, the, the jaguar, but here is a crocodile. We see it all, what they call caiman, actually. They, they call it differently. And look, is just straight into the eyes on the side, the skin in the front of us. And this is um, the river, the river otter as the feed on the, on the food or one of the fish in the river. And of course, we have the blue iguana. What I'm going to share with you here is who I am and what did I did and what do I do. And I show with you a clip of two and a half minutes of a movie uh, that made about my career. And I can also share with you the very interesting news that just came out this week that the movie is going to be available on what they call digital release. As of June, June 19, the movie is going to be available online. And if you'll be part of the of Steve and the, uh, Steve, the artist and the lockdown, we'll be able to send you the link where to pick up the movie and to see it uh, online at home because now we, we still cannot go to the movies. And here is the, the video of the movie, the trailer for the movie. Amos to me is uh, one of the best ambassadors of the ocean. Takes a huge amount of risks to bring those images which nobody else has ever been able to capture. He comes back with images that no one can get. He is probably the best underwater still photographer in the world. His story was almost read in mystery. He doesn't have a normal life, he doesn't have children. He's married to the ocean. He has this passion. He wants to be in the water, close to polar bear, swim with the biggest predator on earth. If the wind is too turbulent, you're not going to go there. There's so many factors that can work against you. All right, guys, we're taking off. Carlos and his team have only five days to find a polar bear and take a look at It's the one animal where humans are part of their food chain. People get eaten by polar bears. He needs that adrenaline rush. He needs to be at the edge. And if he doesn't do it in one way, he'll do it in another way. And maybe his military background has hard to do with it. I was in the army as a mystery to me. I didn't come home really. I can see blue sky compared to seeing flames. I wonder if there is some kind of unfinished business that's going on. Are you living yourself? And go all the way with the better ones. And this is all the power of me. <laughs> Almost wants to prove that those large animals aren't our enemies, and we can live with them in harmony. And it's coming soon on June 19. It will be available to all online, and we'll share with you the link. Well, no matter what you see here and how brave it's, it seems that I am, I have fears, but fear makes me more alert. And the survive and the, the desire to survive and the survival skill is to be able to know that retreat is not a defeat. Retreat is opportunity uh, to do the same thing better next time. But no matter what, I could not do anything alone. And I must share the good news or to share with you all the accolade and all the, the beauty that I see with the unsung heroes, the people that which will help me, which helped me before and hopefully in the future to continue to pursue my joy of photography in the wilderness for purpose of conservation. And those are the people in Ladakh, those are the people in Brazil that uh, share with me the time. And this is Dr. Sylvia Earle to the, to the right, myself, 
and the polar bear uh, swimming over my head. And that's part of the other part of the business we do. It is creating a fine arts line of prints, which are one of a kind, only 30 of each one of them. And we have only about few that we sell in this uh, particular for collection purposes and high quality. If I leave you with anything today, besides a beautiful picture and my voice and my accent maybe, but be kind and mindful of all wilderness on land and in the ocean. That is the most important element. All of the animals that you see here are free and wild. I did not tempt them, I did not bet them, I did not bite them, I did not anger them, I did not challenge them to come to play in the front of the camera, all because of passion and dedication. And to see more of my work under the expedition, uh, go to please go to the big to the website biganimals.com. I concentrate and focus on the big animal, on the one that threatened and danger to our environment, all of the whales, the cats, and of course uh, the sharks. And if you are interested in my photography, uh, please go to abosphotography.com. I thank you. I thank you very much. I thank. Uh, uh, Steve, and for the team of artists on lockdown to be able to give us opportunity to be with you. If you have any question, I'm available and happy to answer. Okay, we did it. <laughs>